I'm going to show you today a few of the techniques that I use for drawing quick sketches in the field of animals that are moving around and not being cooperative. A lot of the drawings that you see that are done for field guides are, are done taking all of the little field sketches that we uh, create, putting those together with photographs, um, sometimes with dead uh, skins of birds, so artists have lots of materials to get every feather detail. When you're doing a field sketch, it's a different sort of a thing. What you're going to try to do is get something that gets the posture, the form, and the composition of how birds are interacting with the place that they're in and with each other. So I'm going to try to show you a few of my quick sketching techniques and my approach to doing one of these drawings. I like to start my drawing by blocking in the basic locations and shapes with a really pale non-photo blue pencil. Probably from the camera angle that you're looking at, you probably won't be able to even see a single mark that I'm making. But from here, I can actually see kind of these blue ghosts of the birds starting to form on the page in front of me. This allows me to get in the basic shape of what I am going to be doing. There I go. And if I like the composition, if I like the forms that I'm seeing, then I can go on and start to draw more details on top of that. But this allows me to get the basic posture, the proportions, and the, the angles of, of what I'm seeing. So I'm going to be drawing a pair of black neck stilts here. When I'm sketching the field, I often will kind of really overemphasize the angles that I see on the bodies. And it's really easy to over-round drawings that you do. But by looking for those angles, instead of making everything connect with a really smooth curved line, I can get something that I find approximates what I'm really seeing there in the field a lot more closely. The purpose of quick sketches like this are to help you take advantage of fleeting moments in the field where if you try to slow down and get in every detail, you really wouldn't be able to. one up here is going to be sleeping. When you look at birds from the back, their leg actually angles down diagonally underneath them so that it stays underneath their center of gravity. Quick drawing like this <coughs> can be fleshed out with a few spots of watercolor very quickly. Still have that white rump patch. I'm leaving that spot open there on that back view of this stilt right here.
bring in a few other colors in the grasses, the tulies that are sticking up behind these birds. And then everything has a reflection. So reflections cast the image of what you're seeing vertically straight down in the water from it. Sometimes there's a change in the tone, the intensity of the colors. You can get into the habit of always making water that you draw blue because somewhere in our early education or thinking about colors and what things are supposed to be, water is supposed to be, the sky is supposed to be blue, uh, but very often it's not. Uh, depends on the, the state of the overcast conditions or the sunny sky that uh, you're in. In this case, why don't we make this a bright sunny day? Here is water that is coming down this way. I'm going to leave a little space here for the reflection of that first avocet. I just said Avocet when I'm drawing stilts. When I'm sketching out in the sun, my page dries really, really quickly. Here in the studio, it can take a little bit longer. So while one part of the drawing is drying, I'll often jump over to a different part of that drawing and work on that. Looks like this may be dry enough for me to drop in the red of the legs. There you have it. It doesn't have details, the fine feather by feather uh, details that you see in a field guide illustration, but it gives you a sense of the feeling of what you're looking at when you're out there encountering the birds in the field at the distance that you actually observe them.